before Quinn, before Lincoln, before Zero, before marriage, and I suspect before the beginning of the universe, there was mayhem. Penny Mayhem, to be exact. In her current form, a diminutive dog who looks like she was thrown together with scrap Ridgeback parts, Penny turned 10 last week. But before we celebrate here, a confession. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have brought her home. If I had known the cost of loving Penny, the true cost, I wouldn't have been willing to pay the bill. It would be a CVS length receipt with line items of stress and frustration and shame for me. And a fire sale on ferocious qualities for her, so why not throw them all in the basket? A reminder on the bottom that all sales are final. If you told me this little creature would be so stubborn and so driven and above all so relentlessly wild, I would have thanked you for saving me the trouble. But you know what the funny thing about life is? I'm an idiot. So much so that even if I had all the answers 10 years ago about everything I would learn from Penny, I still would have made the wrong choice. It's my good fortune then that the meager limits of my mind are exceeded by the limits of my heart. Enough so that I promised to love this girl before I knew who she was. In the decades since, Penny's tested my promise, my heart, and my sanity. Quite diligently, as you can see here. She's caused more trouble than I suspect every dog I'll have for the rest of my life combined will. But greater than the sum of everything I know about her today is the sum of my love and gratitude for her. Penny has pushed the boundaries of my heart and my love well beyond where I ever could have made them on my own. In short, Penny saved me from myself, the version of me who would have chosen the certainty of knowledge over the wisdom of love. Of all the debts I owe Miss Mayhem, I owe her most for saving me from the easy comfort of a smaller heart. But damn did the girl make me earn it. <laughs> Because what the songs and poems forget to tell you is that love is a job. And for 10 years, Penny's made sure I showed up to work. Yes, in the end, this girl may be the ultimate joker. The misfit who wants to set the world on fire just to watch it burn. But I can promise you she doesn't take a day off. Thinking about it now, I probably should apply this makeup every day to let people know who we're dealing with, but that's another story. In any event, like so many things, it makes sense now. But looking back on those first days, I remember how confused all of us were with the new pup. Surely this insanity was a phase. Surely. This tenacity was temporary. Surely this couldn't last. Surely? If you've been here a while, you know that of course I was wrong. Energizer puppy kept going and going and going. And just when I thought I'd figured out who she was, the rowdy kid sister, the swirly sidekick, the wild little jester, it all came undone when Echo died suddenly. The story I told myself about who I was who Echo was, who Penny was, and who we'd all be, fell apart. I couldn't convince myself there was a way forward. I couldn't even convince myself to get out of bed. 
Through a dark and lonely winter, Penny did both. Often against my will. Dragging me out of bed when I wanted to hide from the day, and dragging me forward on runs when I wanted to claw my way back in time. I was fortunate to have the love and support of so many people during that time. But in so many ways, it was Penny who got me through the darkest days. Her unyielding and ferocious character, which drove me mad so often as a pup, was exactly what I needed to survive. Who better to see you through hell than a hellhound that could make Cerberus whimper? And while my heart ached for Echo, it was so clear Penny suffered from not having a constant companion who could keep up. All those she tested, she found lacking. Present company included. So it was Penny who helped push me through my own resistance and guilt to finally bring home Zero. We welcomed this sweet, block-headed puppy with soft kisses. Penny welcomed him with slightly sharper ones. I feared that the sadist who nearly overwhelmed us would push this new pup away. But the funny thing about Ridgeback boys is that they're masochists. Not only did Zero endure Penny's initiation beat down, he felt so loved by it that he kept trying to nurse from her. Echo leaving and Zero arriving was an inflection point in my life, but also specifically an inflection point in my relationship with Penny. I went from a place of feeling like I was struggling against her to a place where I struggled with her. The relationship changed from one defined by resistance to one defined by acceptance. By embracing her and her personality, our relationship flourished as hers did with Zebra. All of this made possible because I renewed my commitment to love her instead of the dog I thought she should be. Watching her grow into her role as a leader and older sister has been such a joy. And that is especially true for how far Penny has come as the boss of her two-legged siblings. I once feared she would never be comfortable around my kids or even interested in being anywhere near them. Again, I was wrong. She was never the natural nanny or affectionate brother like Zero was. But by paying tribute, Penny has come a long way while still very much staying in character. Sometimes kids need a reminder that Elmo can't protect them, and sometimes Ridgeback boys need to be thrown off the side of a cliff, like Mufasa in The Lion King. The lesson, I think, is that we can both be uncompromisingly ourselves and always become a better version of that self. We can go from not wanting to be within 50 feet of a kid to letting one read books to us at night and that none of those changes should ever stop us or slow us down. <laughs> because in 10 years, this girl hasn't lost a step. And she lets every man, beast, or machine who dares exist in her presence know that they exist at her leisure. And at the end of the day, when I'm certain we finally exhausted her, well, at least exhausted us, she has to give me a little reminder that if she wanted to, she could do it all over again. But therein lies the rub of this whole living thing. You don't get to do it again. Even though you sure as hell don't get it right in the one short shot you've got at it. That so often leaves us looking back with regret or nostalgia, or daydreaming ahead of some perfect moment or life that might be. We think that if we just had the answers, we would know exactly what to do. Fortunately, I've spent the last decade with Penny living firmly in the unknowable chaos of the present moment. I bled for her and with her, 
and witness her burn down so many of the things I was certain about, which all these years later leaves me with just a single truth I hold dear, that our search for meaning is not a search for meaningful answers. It's a search for meaningful questions, the ones we can ask ourselves over and over. Not in the elusive hope of finding the right answer, but in devotion to the goal of keeping our hearts and minds pointed in the right direction. The true cardinal direction. Forward. I've paid for the lesson dearly, but I remain forever in Penny Mayhem's debt for showing me the limits of knowledge and the limitless possibilities of love. Happy 10th birthday to the Queen.